let's explore the cause that anti-Zionists are devoting themselves to advancing, which also happens to be consistent with the 1400-year goal of Islam. Allah took down the people of the scripture book. He cast terror into their hearts. Some you slew, and some you made prisoners, and he made you heirs of their lands, their houses, and their goods. Muhammad's Allah revealed as a deity who cast terror into their hearts and took down the people of the scripture book while stealing the fruit of the labor of generations. The following is an account of how events unfolded after Muhammad attacked that non-combatant, faithful, peaceful, productive, and prosperous farming community of the Banu Khareza Jews who never struck a blow. After the siege exhausted and terrorized them, the Jews felt certain the apostle would not leave them until he had exterminated them. So they decided to talk to Kaab Asad. He said, People of the Jews, you see what has befallen you. I shall propose three alternatives. Take whichever one you please. He said, Swear allegiance to this man and accept him. Then you will be secure in your lives, your property, your children, and your wives. The Jews said, We will never abandon the Torah or exchange it for the Koran. Assad said, Since you reject this proposal of mine, then kill your children and your wives and go out to Muhammad and his companions as men who brandish swords, leaving behind no impediments to worry you. If you die, you shall have left nothing behind. If you win, you shall find other women and children. So the alternative offered to abandoning the Torah and the faith of their forefathers for a couple thousand years and praying toward the land of their prophets and patriarchs to instead spin around to the opposite direction and prostrate themselves toward the Quraysh pagans Blackstone Island Mecca five times a day was to kill their own wives and children, conspicuously abrogating Muhammad's no compulsion in religion dribble. They then surrendered to the prophet's judgment, but he directed them to Saad to give the verdict. Saad said, I give my judgment that their men should be killed, their women and children should be taken as captives, and their properties distributed. So Muhammad didn't even bother to feign a revelation that it was his Allah's judgment on the innocent Jewish farmers, but instead deferred to his booty-coveting subordinate Saad to pass judgment on them. The Messenger of Allah commanded that all of the Jewish men and boys who had reached puberty should be beheaded. Then the Prophet divided the wealth, wives, and children of the Banu Khareza Jews among the Muslims. The Jews were made to come down and Allah's Messenger imprisoned them. Then the Prophet went out into the marketplace of Medina, and he had trenches dug in it. He sent for the Jewish men and had them beheaded in those trenches. They were brought out to him in batches. They numbered 800 to 900 boys and men. Slaughtering those innocent Jewish farm boys and their dads and grandpas, while sexually enslaving their little sisters, mothers and grandmothers. Here's Bukhari's account of a casual conversation in their holy mosque that followed the siege. I entered the mosque, saw Abu, sat beside him, and asked about sex. Abu Sa'd said, We went out with Allah's apostle, and we received female slaves from among the captives. We desired women, and we loved to do coitus interruptus. Ignoring much less supporting the global menace Islam poses at the expense of the people of the book in Israel, is acting through more blind ignorance than anti-Semitic Germans who didn't care about Hitler and the Islamic Grand Mufti of Jerusalem's Holocaust because they hoped it would only affect Jews. In the following photo, Islam's Grand Mufti of Jerusalem gives the old Sieg Heil to Islamic troops in the service of Nazi Germany 
toward the shared goal of genocide of Jews, including two Islamic panzer divisions in Hitler's army. The anti-Semitism, perhaps newer to Nazi Germany, but consistent with the 1400-year history of genocide of Jews in Islam, beginning with Mohammed's mass murder of them. Men of the Khazraj, do you know what you are pledging yourselves to in swearing allegiance to this man? Yes, they answered, in swearing allegiance to him we are pledging ourselves to wage war against all mankind. They fight in his cause, slay and are slain, a promise binding on him in the Koran. Fighting and slaying non-Muslims in Allah's cause is binding on Muhammad's followers in the Koran, which has nothing to do with Zionism, just as Islam has nothing to do with Israel beyond Muhammad's bizarre tale of riding on a flying donkey mule-like animal one night from Mecca to Jerusalem while declaring he prayed in a temple that had been torn down over 500 years prior to his claim the next leg of his fanciful flight up to paradise and then back to Mecca by morning. In Muhammad's religion, belief in the final hour, which is the last day, is so important it is frequently mentioned simultaneously with belief in Allah, as in Surah 2 8, we believe in Allah and the last day. What activity are Muhammad's followers to be engaged in as they anticipate Allah's final judgment upon them? Allah's Apostle said the hour will not be established until you fight with the Jews. The stone behind which a Jew will be hiding will say, O oh Muslim, there is a Jew hiding behind me, so kill him. Even as they anticipate the moment of Allah's final judgment on all people, Muhammad's followers are to be engaged in the act of killing Jews, according to several hadiths. These are only a couple. So who then might Muhammad's Allah really be? You will fight against the Jews and you will kill them until even a stone would say, Come here, Muslim, there is a Jew hiding himself behind me. Kill him. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Whose side are you on? The Israelis or those true fundamental followers of Muhammad who are committed to wiping the Jews out to the last? But is it only about Jews the way Hitler pretended at first? I have been ordered by Allah to fight against the people until they testify that none has the right to be worshipped and that Muhammad is Allah's apostle and offer the prayers perfectly. Those true followers of Muhammad whose mission and ambition is the conquest of all nations of the world and subjugation of all peoples to Muhammad's followers. No faithful Bible-believing Jew or Christian can recognize Allah's apostle as other than a false prophet, just as the Jews of Medina did 1400 years ago that were slaughtered for it. I have been ordered by Allah to fight against the people until they testify that Muhammad is Allah's apostle and offer the prayers perfectly. That means they are to fight against you and your children and your grandchildren. By supporting Muhammad's followers at the expense of the people of the book, anti-Zionists of all stripes, including atheists and agnostics, are essentially consigning their heirs to being compelled to testify that Muhammad is Allah's apostle while being made to prostrate themselves toward the Quraysh pagans black stone idol in Mecca and offer the prayers perfectly in what the gospel describes as the vain repetitions of the heathen to the pagan Arabians deity Allah five times a day. Your children, 
your grandchildren, whatever your beliefs. If a Saudi doesn't make it to morning prayers, the religious police may show up at his door to find out why. Associated Press Residents of a southern Somalia town who do not pray five times a day will be beheaded, an Islamic courts official said Wednesday, adding the edict will be implemented in three days. What if that was your town? The following is a footnote from the Hadith. Hit your pause button and read it completely for yourself. Jihad is holy fighting in Allah's cause with full force of weaponry. By jihad, Islam is established and Allah is made superior, and he becomes the only God who may be worshipped. By jihad, Islam is propagated and made superior. Jihad is an obligatory duty in Islam on every Muslim. He who tries to escape this duty dies as a hypocrite. Muslim hypocrites who have been deceived into believing that Islam is a religion of peace and engage in dawah or spreading Islam are actually laboring to be ruled by the likes of the Taliban or whichever group emerges that is more murderous than they are who will ultimately win any debate between a peaceful hypocrite and a true fundamental follower of Muhammad who disagrees with them and holds a beheading knife in one hand and is supported by the Koran in his other hand. It's obvious that Satan will continue to win any such dispute. He even had an answer for those hypocrites who don't have the stomach for fighting in Allah's cause. Fighting is prescribed for you and ye dislike it, but it is possible that ye dislike a thing which is good for you and that ye love a thing which is bad for you like perhaps the converse of fighting, which is not fighting, peace, and civility. Whose side are you on?